Osio, what's up beautiful souls? Welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Mamina. You can call me Mina for short. We're going to hop into this message. It's a really important message. I wasn't planning on doing anything like this today at all, but it just, it had to come out. It needs to come out. So we're going to hop right on into it. Be sure that you subscribe. If you resonate with this video, you comment below, like all that good jazz. Let's hop right on into the message. A lot of you are feeling very stuck or trapped in either a relationship or a work environment or some type of living arrangement. But when it comes to work, I'm going to start with work first because that was the first thing that channeled in was a lot of you being in a place where you're not being valued. It's like you're, you know, you're working your behind off and you're not really getting what you deserve for the work that you're putting in. And I don't just mean financially. I mean the way that you're being treated. This was really, really heavy energy here. But I feel like a lot of you are like, well, I need to stay on the job because I have to learn these skills. I have to get this experience. But the thing is, you already have a certain amount of knowledge or you know a lot about what you're doing. So the experience part is being able to say, I did that on the job you get what i'm trying to say it's like being able to say okay i know how to paint but i painted for this gallery i know how to make glass but i made it for this shop or i did it for this space so that by the time you go or want to create your own thing if they were to say well what experience do you have instead of just going oh i know a lot about it because i've done it all my life you can go i actually worked at this facility the problem is there's an individual or individuals breathing down your neck constantly criticizing every little thing you do not because you can't do the job but because they don't want you to really stand in your power be recognized for what you can do so it's like you know that and again i kept picking up on people who deal with glass like the um you know you see those beautiful multicolored glasses and, and they actually make it with and all that i'm seeing that I'm seeing hands-on work, like craft type work, like maybe molding clay or doing construction of some type, but it was, everything felt very hands-on. And it's like, you know what you're doing. You have experience already to some extent in what you're doing. You're just trying to learn other methods or way of looking at it. And when you do something amazing, here comes this person breathing down your neck, like, oh, that could have been better. Oh, uh, that's not, that's not sharp enough. That's not cut right. Oh, the, the glass isn't melted correctly on this side. You know, like just finding little things and it's not constructive criticism. It's not, okay, here's what you did wrong. And let me show you how to do it right. It's just, oh, you think you cute. Cause you, you know, you came here thinking that you knew something because of blah, 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 but really your shit. Like that's the vibe that they're giving you. And this is creating a lot of anxiety. This is creating a lot of overwhelming emotions because for some of you, you want to snap. For some of you, you're like, I'm ready to cuss this person out. I'm ready to deck them one good time, but you hold back. For others, it's creating this constant state of anxiety and worry. I mean, it's keeping you up at night. It's really stressing you out because you, you might feel like you need the money. You might feel like you need the skill in order to get maybe some type of grant or some type of, you know, just being able to say, I, I worked in this space. I did this job. So yes, I know how to do this on a professional level because the eight of pentacles, or in this case, it's Egyptian beetles, the eight of, of, of that energy is to say that it's something I know already, but I wanted to perfect it. And as I'm perfecting it, I'm putting it into practice. I'm doing it. I'm making something to sell or whatever the case may be. But that nine of swords energy is saying I'm up at night because I'm constantly worried and feeling this anxiety due to the fact that in that work environment is toxic. It's kind of like, imagine some of y'all didn't know anything about Amazon as far as like the work environment is, right? And let's say, you know, you get a call and you get this, what you thought was a great job to work at like an Amazon warehouse. And maybe when you first get there, everybody's cool. Everybody's nice. And then you start realizing you only have 20 minutes to like eat lunch, go to the bathroom. Um, you know, you got to be on your feet constantly. Like you start realizing just how draining the position is. But why do you stay? Because you have this fear and this anxiety of not being able to survive without it. Even though with it, you're barely surviving physically. It's like you're really, really getting tied out. To confirm that feeling of like someone breathing over your shoulder, someone constantly just getting on your case and staying on your neck. I feel like this is a person 
And this, this is the devil energy. Set is coming in as the devil card energy. And it's a person that wants you to feel stuck or wants you to feel beneath them so that they can keep some type of control of you. If I feel like for some of y'all, you're in a situation where you got to be careful with your ideas because you've slipped up before and you've mentioned maybe how a decoration in a store could go. It could be that simple. For some of you, it is that simple. It's as simple as going, oh, we're, you know, we're in summer right now. And pretty soon decorations for fall are going to pop up. And maybe you had this idea and then bam, that person takes it. And, and they act like they added something to it, but they really didn't. And they make it seem like, oh, well, you know, your idea was okay and all, but I had to finesse it or I had to do this or I had to do that. It was nothing wrong with your idea. It's just that they need you to stick around so that you can do all the work they don't want to do. They need you to stay in a certain position, though, so that you don't go a bit higher than them. So whether this is like going into manager position, supervisor position, for others, you're just dealing with a very negative entity. There's something going on in your energy. There's something going on in the environment around you. And it's manifesting as these negative entities and situations and people. And all of them involve that same, I'm putting pressure on your neck, stay under my foot kind of energy. And it's really stressing you out. It's really keeping you up at night. You're being told it's time to walk out of this situation because honestly, this isn't, keep in mind, the devil energy is to make you feel trapped. That, that energy is to make you feel stuck in an addiction or a situation or a connection. But in reality, the ropes around these individuals are loose. The, the ropes aren't holding them tight. There's nothing that Set's energy could do here if those two people were to go, you know what, I'm bouncing. So what does he do? You see the tornado in the background. You see that it looks like there's a sandstorm. The sky looks ominous. Keep them in a state of, of chaos. Keep their mentality in a state of lack and chaos. And if they stay in that mentality and in that state of lack and chaos, then they're not going to believe that they can move forward out of the situation. So he never has to tighten the rope. He can't anyway. What he can do is keep your mentality in a position where you don't think you can come out. But it's a choice. It's a choice to stay there. And that's Sometimes for people, that's the hardest part and the worst part is to realize that they're putting up with something they don't have to based on feelings that aren't really anything but that, a feeling. You know, the nine of swords is swords energy. It's temporary energy. It's a temporary mentality. It's a temporary sensation. It can feel crippling. It can feel debilitating, but it's temporary. And when something tries to make you think it's permanent, it's because it doesn't have the power to keep you there otherwise. You're being told that it's time to move on. We have eight of onyx here, which is the eight of cups energy. You're being told it's time to it's time to go. Move on past this energy. It can't keep you there. Research what you have to do. Find new job or maybe finally take the chance on yourself. Because I feel like for some of you, it's once again that feeling of, and this keeps channeling in for every time work is a topic. This energy comes in where it's like people aren't making certain moves because quite frankly, they don't trust themselves or they keep thinking they have to save up to a certain amount. You'll look down the road and it'll be decades of you trying to save for something that you could have worked on a bazillion times over. You need to start reading the energies and you really need to start paying attention to the vibrations around you. When something gets heavy like this to the point that it's affecting your health, you have to make a decision to shift that energy. And if that means leaving a certain space, then that's what it means. Staying there and then asking for a sign, asking for a sign, and the sign keeps coming and the sign keeps coming and you keep ignoring it and keep ignoring it out of what? Fear, anxiety. It's time to wake up. The Nine of Swords is also about waking up from the nightmare, waking up from the from that bondish state of mentality, waking up from that lack state of mentality. The Five of Beatles, Five of Pentacles energy that's coming in here represents that whole, you feel like you're left out in the dark. You feel like you're in the cold. But in reality, there's a light on. In this case, this is, you know, again, some of you are trying to control your temper in this situation and it feels like a sandstorm it feels like being attacked at every point from every position can't even like see clearly right but behind them is this bright light of a sacred space that they can find rescue uh, refuge and sanctuary in that's your situation there is a place up out of this toxic energy but you have to move into it and when you do 
everything's going to change. With some of you, this work environment involves a legal matter. You could be suing due to, you know, being treated wrongfully or you're thinking about it. Um, you might have already made certain reports and you didn't see anything done. I want you guys to not only tap into common sense, but tap into, again, when justice comes on the floor here, energetically, justice also means paying attention and doing what you need to do, like work accordingly. So if you find that there's a legal matter here, like you need to take some type of legal stance, get all the information, collect everything, collect every nasty text message you ever got, every like shady email, um, journal, what's been said to you, go in your phone, go in your, I, I mean, print it out if you're doing it via phone, but even in your journals, write down time, date, this is what so-and-so full name, full job description, this is what they did. The more detailed you have a record of what's going on, the, the, the more to work in your favor because justice wants to be on your side, but justice is saying you have to stand in your truth in order for justice to do that. You have to stand in the truth. I know a lot of times y'all, and I've, I've gotten on this topic before where people talk about their truth, my truth. Sometimes the truth does exist with one of the sides because one side can sometimes be boldly lying. So it's like if a person's boldly lying on you and saying you're lazy, but you work your ass off, the proof is in the pudding, document it, show it. If you have to sometimes record yourself doing certain things, collect the evidence you need and be firm in that truth. Don't waver. Don't be scared. Don't all of a sudden, you know, like they say something and you're getting a little nervous or whatever. Stand in that truth and justice will be on your side. And again, it's really saying leave this situation. Like, leave it, move on from it, get out, right? Go to a safer space, come out of lack mentality, come out of overwhelmed anxiety so that you can fix your situation. Once you do that, karma karma is going to take care of the rest, legally and otherwise. But for some of you, I do feel like there's some type of evidence or just a record of things you need to start keeping that maybe you weren't before. If you can remember exact time and dates of situations before, then do it. Because for all you know, there could be camera footage of them treating you a certain way. There could be other people they've done this to that'll come out and be like, they did that to me too. You, you won't know until you start putting certain things in order. But most importantly, rely on your own self-resilience, okay? The Two of Swords, the Two of Swords is saying, cut it. You know, normally she has her arms crossed over her chest because she's trying to cut something out or cut and see a clear view, but she's indecisive. In this energy, I'm I'm more so picking up that they're telling you there's no need for indecision here. Justice is saying there's no need for indecision. The blades are already on each side. Like something's already been cut. You just need to now physically follow through with what the, the sacred energies have done. All right. Now, from a love relationship type of perspective this gets really really deep i mean the work one was already kind of deep but from a relationship perspective it gets deeper once again we have someone wanting to work on themselves or someone wanting to work on a passion those of you where this is like a um more of a romantic problem or a family problem it involves some working for something that you've been passionate about you've already studied it maybe you went to school for it but you never implemented it for whatever reason you just you never utilized it and now you're like okay i need to brush up on it and i need to get back into it and we have the same energy again of somebody over your shoulder critiquing everything but it's not from a positive place it's like let's say you wanted to be a painter or let's say you again i keep picking up like on glass work so a lot of you might want to do you know, I'm picking up people who would like have Etsy shop because they do everything's made by hand type of energy. Whatever it is, it's beautiful. You get compliments all the time. If there's something you need to improve, you know, there are people who can point it out in a better way. But there's this individual could be a husband, boyfriend, could be family, could be a so-called fake friend that just breathes over your neck and go, oh, that's not your best work. Should you really do that though? Like it's been years. Okay, you went to school for that 20 years ago. You never used it. So, you know, times are different. You know, with COVID, you got to have a more legit job, blah, blah, blah. Like they constantly keep putting you down. And it's so bad, it keeps you up at night. It makes you anxious. It makes you fearful to take the next step. 
So it's just like with that other reading, there's this feeling of like I'm overwhelmed and I'm anxious. I'm trying to learn something. I'm trying to put it into practice, but there's somebody over my shoulder constantly putting me down, constantly critiquing me, constantly pretty much saying that what you're doing isn't good enough. And at some point, you're starting to translate that energy into I'm not good enough. And that's a big problem because that's how you get stuck in that toxic, oh, look, everything around you is crazy. Don't you feel like you can't move? Don't you feel like you're bind, bound to me and et cetera? That's where that energy comes from, them creating them sleepless nights and that chaos. I'm also, and this is where like ish got really funky real quick because it's already funky. But it, for some of you, there's an ex, could be ex-husband, there it could be ex-wife. There's an ex that keeps popping up on you. And every time they come around, chaos ensues every time without fail. This is going to be hard for you to hear, but you need to hear it. Like I said, I wasn't trying to do this today, but some of y'all needed it. You cannot keep opening the door and then simply just blaming it on, oh, it's because they showed up. They're showing up because they know that you're going to open the door. The devil can't get in if you don't let it in. That, that so-called something's taking me over energy can't happen if there's not something in the psyche that's allowing it. This could be a trigger that they're aware of. This feels, again, like a person that has that kind of energy up. I'm going to make you feel like you need me, like you ain't ish without me. And so whenever they pop up, that's what happens. First, maybe it starts off with the charming crap and then it moves right into, but you know, you need me. Remember how, remember how I took care of this and I took care of that and I did this for you and that for you. But here's what you should be asking yourself. Isn't it funny that when you moved out or you left or you divorced them, whatever you did, that you were living your best life until they came to your door? If there was something that was hard, it damn sure didn't have anything to do with them making it easy. But as soon as they come around, they start talking that same rhetoric you fall back in the same position. You have to take responsibility for the choice. The ropes around these two individuals are, I mean, honestly, they're not even tied in a knot. She could wiggle her hips out. He could just get up, quite frankly, right? These two figures could leave this situation, but what is Set's energy doing here? It's making them feel intimidated. It's making them feel like if I leave, if I move, he's going to get me. Or if I leave, I'm going to I'm going to get caught up in the tornado or caught up in the storm or the sky is ominous. Oh my God. It's making you feel overwhelmed so that you can't make a decision. This person has no power, but the power that you give them. And you know this already. And you might've had people that really care about you trying to say this to you in, in every way they could think of and you just haven't been listening. For some of you, I do feel like this energy was abusive to some extent. And that's triggering for some of you. But you gotta hear what you gotta hear to leave the situation. Because again, it's saying, leave, go. Leave in the night if you have to. And, you, and listen, some of y'all have a tendency of telling people what you're about to do. Especially those of you who aren't intimidated. Right. You have a tendency of being like, OK, that's why I'm going to leave you. OK, well, that's why I'm moving next week. They don't need to know what you're doing until it's done. Same with the work situation. You can gather all your evidence in either of these. And for those of you who might be dealing with a verbally abusive person, they don't text you some crap. They don't. They've done the because they're bold. So they don't care. They don't think you're going to do anything like what you going to do. They don't care so that you have evidence, but you're not using it. You're not using it properly. If it's about moving, it's about leaving. You might be leaving state. You do it. You don't say where you're going. You change your address. You change your, you change everything. If this was a marriage and they had certain sensitive information like social security and otherwise, when you show them that you've divorced this person or that you're no longer associated with this person, then you go through the channels, the legal channels necessary to keep them from accessing your information. There's a way to do this. There are no problems without solutions. The question is, are you going to be strong enough, courageous enough, and bold enough to understand that justice is on your side and you can make the decision? Because only you can do it. There is no parent, no therapist, no nobody of, of so-called authority. There's no, there's no one who can tell you as what to do as far as like in a controlling move this way. You have to make those decisions on your own. The best that anyone can do, the best that, that anyone can do is provide you with the knowledge and with the courage to do so. But the decision is yours. You're always responsible for your actions and reactions. That includes when it's also putting up with something negative. And that can be really hard for a lot of y'all to hear and really hard for a lot of y'all to accept. But that's a part of the game of this energy. The game of this energy is to make you feel like 
if you, you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. And then once you make the decision to realize, okay, I was tolerating something I shouldn't, this energy says now feel guilt about it so that I can come in and make you feel guilty. So that that's a new trigger I can play on to keep you stuck in this nightmare with me. Uh -uh. Move on past that. Justice is on your side. What you put out and what you accept is what you will get back in. I've said that to y'all many a time and this is, this is all across the board. What you tolerate is what you would get. And tolerate doesn't mean that you have to argue with everybody all the time. But sometimes it means you pack your ish and you bounce, you leave. Sometimes it means you cut people off. Sometimes it means you tell people, I don't have time to hear your negativity. Sometimes it means that when you got a person over your shoulder trying to make you feel like crap about you trying to better yourself or do great things, that you choose to say, you know what, if you ain't in my corner, if you're not for me to help support me and give me the tools I need, then you don't need to be in my life. I don't have to hate you. I don't have to wish bad on you, but you don't need to be here with me. This is a decision that a lot of you have been feeling indecisive about. But again, spiritually, vibrationally, a certain cord has already been cut. It's just about you taking the mental, physical action to, to see it through to completion. You've been praying for signs. You've been asking for help out of whatever these situations are, but you've been kind of ignoring because you're afraid of, of how to do it. It's kind of like for those of you in the work situation, it's like you want for the divine to snap his fingers and then the other person's fired and then you get to just be there and do it. Maybe that place ain't for you. And as far as, well, why would I be brought into this situation? That can be based on your own vibration, baby. That doesn't always have something to do with a higher power saying, I'm going to put you in some toxic, dangerous or mentally ill type situation. A lot of times it's the choices and the signs you did not see. Once you're in the situation, the lesson is to catch yourself and to now pay attention. Pay attention in ways you didn't do it before. Not not in the sense that gives you anxiety, not in the sense that makes you panic, but where you just think about it like how you know to just drive your car from point A to point B. Or some of you know how to, you know, go in your garden and garden something a certain way. It's the same dang rhythm. You get in a rhythm of paying attention to what's needed, what's what's truly in lack and what's not. And then you know how to move, you know how to do something, you know how to perfect it, how to work on it. The same thing applies when you're dealing with people and situations. Everything is energy and energy is everything. And your spiritual awakening and, and everything, it propels you and pushes you to pay attention to the things you didn't before. That's how you come across collective readings like this. That's how you end up booking with certain readings or going and following certain gurus. It's not because you need them to tell you what to do. It's because they give you some guidance and some clarity to help you empower yourself to make your own decisions. And that's what this is about. If this is a friendship, same rules apply. Because it's just, I'm constantly hearing a person over your shoulder with this toxic energy, pr putting pressure on your neck. Some are putting you pressure to doing things you don't want to do. And you're feeling like, oh my gosh, like I, what, what am I supposed to do? How do I get out of this? I feel like I need, I, I thought I had to do that, that, that. It's a lot of mental. I think, I think I thought I could, I thought, what am I going to do? And spirits like move on, make that decision, get your emotions in check. And move on and move on in your truth, knowing that justice is on your side, knowing that what you put out is what you will get back. What you choose to tolerate is what you will get back. And if there are people around you that put you in a lack mentality, that can't help you see the light within yourself, can't help you to see the light that's all around you, then they don't need to be in your life. And it's time to cut the cut, to cut the tie, cut the cord. Some of you might need to do a cutting cord ritual whatever it may be. Some of you might have to realize that there are falsely hoods around you. There are people pretending to be your lover, pretending to be your friend, pretending to be the best mom, dad, whatever, but that's not truly what they are. And it's time for you to see them for what they are so that you can move on into a happier space. Some of you are afraid of your happiness. And that's why a lot of times you put up with these situations and it's time to do different. I'm going to get into some oracles to help further along this we have messages good news is coming stay positive all right so there is that there's some there's some good news coming which is also you know that's what the justice card is about here the justice card is about that it's, it's about saying you're gonna get what you truly deserve you've been praying you've been asking for this all you have to do now is follow through with action 
you have to clear your mental, you have to clear your emotional state and then follow through with a physical action. Put some passion behind what you're doing and don't let anybody make you feel like you can't do it. And you'll start seeing there are more messages coming in. There are more positive opportunities. For those of you in a work situation, you might've been applying somewhere else. Don't tell nobody at that job. I don't care if you thought they were your friend or not. People sometimes slip up and talk. Don't tell nobody, just do it. And when the time comes, you put in your two weeks notice and you go where you got to go, right? Because a good message could be that. It could be, you know, the phone ringing saying we're hiring you. For others, you might be looking into buying a house to leave. Uh, you know, again, I'm feeling like ex-husband, ex-wife type situation. You might be hearing, okay, we got your new house or here's a new place for you to come. Hey, we, we got your application for this or, or we got your application for your LLC. Whatever it is, it's good news. So keep that vibration. Don't let nothing take you out of that vibration, okay? What else do we have for this collective? We have warrior. Keep fighting. You are stronger than you think you are. Do not let this person or these people or these entities make you feel like you're less than when truthfully you're a powerhouse. And listen, don't nobody spend their time whispering toxic-ish in somebody's ear because they think they're already weak. No, they do it to make you feel weak. To keep you in a low vibration. Because if you were to ever raise to a higher vibration, they couldn't stomach it, nor could they handle you. Nor could they beat you. So for those of you in a physical confrontation type situation, for most part, I feel like it's verbal. Like someone's verbally abusive. But for those of you where it might even be physical, the reason the person chooses that avenue is because they actually fear the power that you have. Be it mental or otherwise. So they do things to you to keep you in a low vibration. But the truth of the matter is you're a warrior. And when that toxic person comes back around, for those of you who've moved on, you don't open the door. You don't open the door. You don't open the door emotionally. You don't open it mentally. And you damn sure don't open it physically. They stay right out there. You call who you need to call and you stand in that power. And when you stand in that power, it makes them actually feel fearful. Right? You call who you need to call if you feel you need protection. You physically or emotionally you do what you got to do but you don't keep letting this person make you forget who you are you've survived a lot of situations and again this is for whether it's lovers friends colleagues whatever i feel like they make they're making me repeat certain things to like really drill it in we ha look at that we have door new doorways open with new opportunities so close the doors that are not meant for you let them close because when they close, new ones open up, new ones with new opportunities. But you can't see those new opportunities if you keep letting something or someone that's toxic back in your space. You dig what I'm saying? Like, I know that you understand where I'm going with this, where this energy is leading me to go with this. Wasn't I just talking about justice and karma, what you put out and all that jazz? We have Past life karma hinders your growth in this lifetime. That's what it's been for some of you when you're like, why am I going through this situation? Why am I going through that situation? How come every time I turn around? Because there's something in your energy. Remember what I said in the beginning of this reading? Something in the energy isn't allowing you to let go. And it's time to acknowledge it and let it go and say, I'm standing in my power for these new doors to open by releasing any karma that doesn't do me justice. This is also a card for those other people. For some of you, it applies to you. For others, it applies to the other people that were messing with you. They're going to get their just desserts. The more that you stand in your truth, the more that you allow yourself to see there are new opportunities and new messages of positivity coming in your life, the more those people are going to be sick to their stomach. And the more they try a little sneaky conniving-ish, the more they're going to be dealt and hit with a heavy dose of karma. And that's what I feel like whoever this person is, this guy that's making you a woman, that's making you feel lesser than them as far as like in a relationship, friendship type, you know, lover type situation, whatever it is, that person's going to be dealing with karma and already is. And if you pay attention to their life, there are already things going wrong for them and they take it out on you. They want you to seem like you're the cause. And when they, when they come to that door and they try to get you to open it up, they try to guilt you into it. Don't be guilted. Don't let that trauma, that past life, past energy trauma affect you because past life trauma can be in this life it can be something from childhood it could be something from a, a relationship that's 10 five years old but for a lot of you it is something much older than that it's something that's like in your soul dna that needs to be released we have rest time to relax healing needs to take place 
you know why because you've been up all night stressing worrying over all of this when truthfully once you stand in your truth and your power and you realize that the divine is on your side and you allow yourself to really receive these messages with no bias you you'll be able to stand in such a strong energy that that sleepless night and it's gonna be like i can't even believe i went through that i can't believe i was crying over that rest is needed it'll help you think clearly It'll help you come to terms with what you need to come to terms with. We have Capricorn energy confirmed two times because the devil card is Capricorn energy. And here it is again. Wasn't I talking about business? We have business matters, determination, ambitions. The person that's hindering you is trying to hinder your determination, trying to stop you from having ambitions in the business field, trying to stop you from expanding. And it's time that you do. Now they can be Capricorn or you can be Capricorn. But like I always tell you guys, it's not about the Zodiac having to be in your chart. If it is, kudos that's a huge you know pro for you it'll help you understand like how to flex your own energy better but in many cases it's the energy that's playing a part in your story right we have up here we we have earth energy over here we have um air energy you see what i'm saying we have a we actually we have a lot of earth energy on here because we have like two two cards that represented earth and two cards that represented air with the swords energy right we have a lot of energies that are playing into that that needing to be practical needing to be determined needing to be on point needing to see what's happening in your atmosphere in this physical plane a lot of what's going on is affecting your mind and your physical the only emotional card we had was that eight of waters that eight of onyx and that card of onyx and that card is saying that it's time to get your emotion and mental state correct so that you can physically move on past all of this trauma and drama. So you might find that some of you have, um, I'm, I'm sensing Taurus is in someone's chart for sure. Some of you might be Capricorn, Taurus, or Virgo. Some of you might be Aquarius, Gemini, or uh, what's the other one? Uh, Libra. Libra is definitely here because justice came out. So whether, again, that's in your chart or whether it's just a part of showing you how the energies work, showing you where you need to increase and where what you need to push away, that's the important thing to take in here. When it comes to the water card, I kept hearing Scorpio and Pisces particularly. But you could also be Cancer. But I kept hearing Scorpio and Pisces. Scorpio is about realizing transformation and going through said transformation, right? Allowing yourself that rebirth, allowing whatever doesn't serve you to die right pisces is standing in your psychic power standing in your intuition and cancer would be getting more in tune with your emotions in the first place because both cancer and pisces can be very emotional people well scorpio too but you get what i'm saying it's it's time to like tap into these energies walls are up boundaries and limits i'm really hearing that most of you you know you got to be careful on being guarded too guarded with the good things that are coming in but it's also this need to um it's also this need to watch excuse me for my alarm going off it's also this need to to put boundaries up again with the people trying to come in that don't belong in just be mindful that when you start sensing the good energy when you start getting signs of the good energy don't block it don't let these people make you block your blessings wow before I could even shuffle this deck, there's two cards. Oh my gosh, more than two actually turned over. We have, don't fear a blank canvas. Use it to turn your life into a masterpiece. We have, the will will turn in your favor. Keep going. Let go. I mean, really let go. There's something better on the horizon. Don't compare your life to others. Your journey is your own. You miss the beauty when you are stressed. Be gentle with yourself. Be messy sometimes. Let it go. That let it go energy again. Know that whatever decision you make, it was the right. Whatever decision you make will be the right one. As far as, and I feel like that's because after this, a lot of you, you know, you know what to do. Even before this, a lot of you knew what to do. I didn't even get to shuffle these cards yet. And I always make sure my cards are turned the correct way. I'm, you know what? We're going to leave that where it is. We're going to leave that right where it is. I'm actually going to pull some angel numbers and then I'm going to end this right here because I'm being told those are the cards you're meant to have. Those were what were meant, was, bleh, those were what was meant to come out. I don't need to shuffle. I'm getting tongue tied. So somebody here, communication, 
Y'all already know when tongue tie comes in, it's something about communication. We have 1212. Stay focused on your best possible future and remain optimistic throughout the entire journey. Your angels are right behind you. You as you turn your dreams into reality, they're right behind you as you turn your dreams into reality. I am focused. Where energy, where focus goes, energy flows. Okay, spirit. They're saying curtain call. Yeah, let go. It's time to let go. When curtains and everything start falling, that's confirmation. We have 27. Your mind is wide open. You are tolerant and compassionate towards all ways of life. You value freedom of expression and want to improve the condition of people, whether in your community, country, or world at large. Those of you who have artistic endeavors. And I'm going to stop it right there, my loves. Oh, we have one more at the bottom of the deck that was called for eight. Your talents for setting and reaching goals is like no other. You are self-sufficient and capable of achieving your ambitions. Eight represents the EBB and flow, the infinite loop of creation. It's the infinity band. My loves, that was your message. I really pray that that brought you the clarity you needed. I'm being told it's time to close the curtain on this reading. Peace, love, and light, beautiful souls.